In this video, we're going to look at a PMP bipolar junction transistor wired as a current source. So this is the uh, more uh, basic version that uh, I drew up. You'd probably see that. This is closer to the circuitry we'll be looking at, and I have an even more detailed uh, schematic off to the right. But in uh, any case, as I said, it's a current source. We're using a PMP bipolar junction transistor. We're going to use the 2N3906. I forgot to write it uh, next to any of these transistors, but I wrote it up on the top, so that's what I'm using. And the uh, nice thing about the uh, PNP current source is that it actually sources current. So the uh, transistor is on the more positive side of the circuit, so it will give a current to a load which goes to ground, and so that is a source. The NPN bipolar junction transistor, it's uh, basically the same circuit. Uh, it's using an NPN bipolar junction transistor though, so the load's on the more positive side. So technically it's sinking current, but you still call it a current source because it sets a current. This actually sources the current, so it looks nicer, but it's more confusing. And so I had to figure this out uh, before I made the uh, diagram today. And uh, so uh, hopefully I didn't make any mistakes, and also hopefully I explain it good enough where things make sense. So. Let's uh, zoom in. As I said, we have a PNP bipolar junction transistor. We cannot pluck this jumper right now. And so it was just letting current go through the uh, jumper. We have that resistor limiting current. So, I mean, you can just short circuit it. It will have a set current. And it will provide that same current as long as the load doesn't need too much power. I'll probably have to move the light to somewhere about there. But uh, let's take a look at the component. I forgot to put the pin layout on the diagram, and I don't even know if I had enough space after I added the stuff. But in case, there you can see really nicely there, that's the 2N3906 right there. And so if the uh, transistor starts with 2N, and it's a bipolar junction transistor because there's other uh, components that uh, begin with uh, 2N that aren't bipolar junction transistors, but if it's a bipolar junction transistor, I find the pin layout, whether it's NPN or PNP, when you're looking at the flat side, left pin is the emitter, middle pin is the base, and right pin is the collector. So the emitter is there. I'm going to turn the transistor this way because we want the emitter towards the more positive side of the circuit since it's a PNP bipolar junction transistor. So it's still up there. So I'm going to put the emitter to the resistor there. And then the base, we come to this jumper, which goes to a trim pot, the output of the trim pot. And then here we have the collector, which uh, we will attach our load or use the uh, uh, multimeter as a load while measuring current. So we'll zoom back and look at that right there. Now, the uh, let's just go right to this more detailed schematic here. So... We're dealing with 5 volts at the moment. We can't power much with 5 volts, so I'm going to bump it up to uh, 10 volts. But I try to make 5 volts my uh, default position because there's all kinds of breadboard power supplies that are 5 volts. A lot of integrated circuits are intended to use 5 volts. And uh, so I'm mostly putting 5 volts now. And uh, I'll uh, work my way up after that. But in uh, any case, you can see here, that uh, this is the voltage that we want to set across the resistor. The resistor is what sets the current and uh, based on the voltage across it. So you give it a voltage but uh, the value resistor you pick after that will determine the current. And I'm going to use one kilo ohm because if you put one volt across one kilo ohm uh, resistor you'll get one milliamp of current because a milliamp is one thousandth of an amp. And so you can see here that we're going to need to give the uh, base of the transistors. The uh, chemistry of the PNP transistors opposite of the NPN. So now we're going to look at things because the emitter is towards the positive side of the power supply. We're going to look at things in relationship to the positive side of the power supply instead of the negative side of the power supply. So this is where it got confusing. So instead of working the uh, voltage up 
at the base to get a higher current. In this case, we're actually going to work the voltage down at the base to get a higher current. There's also the base drop. So, if we want 1 volt, we have to get 1 volt lower than the 5 volts, so that's 4 volts, but then there's the uh, base to emitter that adds another about 0.6 volts that we have to add to this number. So we want to subtract about 1.6 volts away from 5 volts to get about 1 volt across this resistor. And uh, so I know that's kind of confusing, and uh, hopefully it's not, but uh, but uh, if it is, uh, oh well, I can't do too much about that. So to uh, set the current, we actually have to uh, get current flowing through the uh, collector to the uh, negative rail there. Otherwise, without that, there won't be a voltage buildup within and current within the uh, component there. And so the uh, current that we get through here, actually, it'll go through the resistor, through the transistor, down negative there. It will pull the voltage down. And we can look at that right now. We'll look at the voltage right now without the load. So 4.2. Now when we add the uh, jumper, now we have 3.7. So it threw it off when uh, when we didn't have it right there. So let's get that jumper on. And then, so as I said before, we want to take away one volt to get one volt across here, take away from five, and then also 0.6 volts, take away 1.6 volts. So that'll be about 3.4 volts. And uh, so I can go do a ground there. And uh, let's go this way. It's a little easier to hold with one hand that way. And so I can just manually set this pretty uh, pretty easily so about 3.4 and so the lower we go the higher the voltage will be across uh, there sorry you can't see the meter completely so there we go now we should have about one volt across the uh, resistor right there and that's going to set the current it's one kilo ohm resistor we expect one milliamp of current even with the uh, varying loads but we're not dealing with much power supply voltage and so loads will quickly start dropping the amount of current that we can get through it but uh, let's first look it's really no load it's going through the meter but the meter is kind of like a piece of wire it pretty much lets current go through it freely and there you can see we have uh, one milliamp of current and before I move along I can take away the one kilo ohm resistor. This is a 510 ohm resistor, half of the resistance, so we will have twice the voltage. Now we should have uh, two. I put that to the base, so that would not have worked. There we go. Now we should have two milliamps of current, and there you can see twice uh, the current. And uh, it's 510 ohm resistor, so it wasn't exactly half. This is a two kilo ohm resistor, though and uh, depending on its tolerance it should be twice the resistance of the one kilo ohm so we should have 0.5 milliamps of current and there you can see 0.5 right there so you can adjust the voltage but also the resistance but the one kilo ohm resistor makes the math really easy so let me make sure I got that there we go make sure it's the one kilo ohm and we are back to the one milliamp of current so now if we want to raise the amount of current that's going through here. Actually, before we do that, we got to look at the uh, an LED. We're going to change the load by putting an LED. I'll zoom in so we can see that uh, a little better there. Of course, the long lead the anode needs to go towards the more positive side of the circuit. So that's towards the resistor to the uh, collector right there. Short lead the cathode is down one row right there and we will take the uh, current measurement and you can see we got 1.08 1.09 so pretty much spot on exactly the same so a load may alter it a spec that's what I think is happening there but for the most part it's pretty steady let's add another one in series before we move on so that's one more row down now since we're only dealing with 5 volts and 
these two LEDs are dropping pretty close to a 5 volts we should have way less current so we're going to need uh, more voltage to uh, power uh, more demanding loads but uh, as long as we have enough power it's going to provide the same amount of current to a changing load and so if we want let's say a 3 volts then we have to lower 3.6 volts away from 5 so we get away from the 5 the number of volts we want but then we have to add 0.6 to that because of the drop there so taking away 3.6 volts that gives us about 1.4 so we can look at that again we have to have the jumper or we could just measure the uh, the resistor directly too and uh, that may be uh, nicer I do have to get this off of current otherwise it's just gonna if I go across the power supply it's going to provide high current but luckily I limited current to 30 milliamps of current so that would not destroy the meter anyways but if we went directly across a power supply that does not limit current there's a good chance you'll probably most likely blow a fuse so I want to uh, turn the trim pot now till it says 3 volts across that resistor right there and uh, so there's two and a three. So this is the most accurate way to do this if you're going to make an adjustment. So now we uh, took away 3.6 volts away from the 5 volt power supply. So when I measure uh, this point here, let's put uh, that to the negative rail, we should have 3.4 volts approximately. Or 1.4 volts, I mean, approximately. So the math is getting kind of messy because unlike the NPN bipolar junction transistors the numbers kind of work reverse with the uh, PNP but in any case we took away about 3.6 uh, volts and there you can see we got uh, 1.4 volts that is the uh, main takeaway so now if I uh, yank this jumper here and set the meter to uh, milliamps I shouldn't have moved it then we will see that uh, we have uh, 3 milliamps of current and there you can see 3 milliamps of current now I'm pretty sure we're not going to be able to power the LED and keep it at 3 milliamps we, we can power the LED I didn't mean to say that but we're not holding the current the uh, red LED I think we might be able to it doesn't block as much voltage so it doesn't take as much power to uh, light up okay that did a lot better right there so the, the load matters the green LED blocks some more voltage and so that held us back a little bit but in any case green LED should not uh, wipe us out that badly so we're gonna come to the power supply here so as I said I already limited it so if this power supply looks uh, nice to you they run out of stock quite often and uh, they're kind of back ordered now I think on the 19th of October they'll be back in stock again so you kind of have to order these from Amazon right away and I don't see any other find any other sellers so I raised the voltage to 10 volts it's 0.1 there because we lose a little bit of voltage through these uh, wires and stuff uh, to the load so that will hold it a, a spec above 10 volts with those losses and so I did the same thing with uh, 10 volts over here and we can power a lot more though that is the main takeaway so let's see what uh, what number would look uh, interesting let's try to uh, get uh, 5 volts there and so we'll set the trim pot to uh, 4.4 volts because that is 10 volts minus 5.6 volts and uh, so I'll set this to measure uh, voltage. We will put our uh, jumper, and uh, even though it's going to the negative rail, I'm gonna use a red jumper, doesn't matter. Color doesn't matter, other than uh, kind of keeping track of uh, where you're making your connections. It just kind of looks a little better if you use a cool color to uh, indicate you're going more negative. So 
again we wanted 4.6 volts across here I have the probes backwards but that doesn't hurt anything so the voltage is going to change from what it was because we changed the power supply voltage and uh, also the uh, diode drop it gets influenced a bit and so we want to turn this up until we got 4 point 4.4 there we go that's good enough right there no we wanted 5 volts so we would get the voltage here to 4.4 4. if we wanted to do it that way and uh, if we want to get the F5 we just go across the resistor there to F5 turn it down and then when we come over to the uh, trim pot if this is at 5 we'll have 4.4 so again the math is a lot more confusing with PNP than uh, NPN but there you can see 4.4 so we have that now we'll get 5 milliamps of current because we got uh, the uh, 5 volt set 1 kilo ohm resistor still we would uh, we may still be okay going to the uh, 500 ohm resistor but uh, this is getting kind of high voltage for a 500 ohm resistor and so I think we're still good for that one though but let's measure the current through just the collector to be good with got the current there and 5 milliamps of current now we'll add a green LED we saw before that was harder to light than the red LED but uh, there you go 5 milliamps of current and uh, add another green LED I'm not sure where this is going to cut off I haven't done this yet so there already we lost a little bit of voltage with that second LED or a little bit of current I mean that second LED but that's because it's blocking a certain amount of uh, current we can get a green LED and a red LED and still get uh, 5 milliamps of current. So in any case, uh, hopefully this wasn't too confusing. And uh, as I said before, the math, I, I just came up with this uh, just like a few hours before I made the video. I had to make the diagram and everything. And so the math is a bit odd. I also noted here that compared to a 1 kilo ohm resistor at the emitter resistor I should have shrunk that E down but uh, what that's saying is the resistor at the emitter the uh, voltage so you can see it's right there there's the emitter and that's the resistor and so for a 1 kilo ohm resistor at the emitter if you swap it with a 500 ohm resistor that will double the amount of current going through the circuit which will of course uh, heat up the resistor more but uh, in any case you'll get twice the current so you gotta be careful at higher voltages when you lower resistance but instead of a 1 kilo ohm resistor if you use a 2 kilo ohm resistor you'll actually cut the current in half so we looked at that earlier if you're getting 1 milliamp with a 1 kilo ohm if you swap it with a 2 kilo ohm then you'll have half of an amp and so in any case hopefully that all made sense and uh, hopefully I can demonstrate this better but uh, for now this is uh, all I really got so hope you enjoyed thanks for watching I'll see you in the next video